Hello and welcome to Conversations with Linda. I'm Linda. You know, I love to have a good conversation, so let's have one. As you know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And on last Sunday, we had two young ladies here who shared their profound stories, um, painful stories, but stories of survival and victory about their encounters with domestic violence. I want to continue that conversation today by talking and looking at the other side of the coin of domestic violence. I have in our studio today with me Uh, Mr. Greg Williamson, and he's coming on to share with you uh, his experience, not as the abused, but as the abuser. Conversations with Linda, welcome to our show, Mr. Greg Williamson. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right. Let me let me say thank you for inviting me into such a lovely studio. Thank you, thank you. I love all things beautiful. So uh, my environments have to be reflective of that. I understand. Um, And let me just say that I am, um, I'm excited about having this conversation because so often we hear from the abused and we don't hear from the abuser and we hear the story of the abuser through the abused. And because I've done some work with perpetrators of domestic violence, I know they have a story too. And I'm I'm just really appreciative of you coming on to, you know, talk to our audience. And you do this work in the community. This is not just for this show. That's correct. I have a nonprofit organization. Okay. That's a, a domestic violence nonprofit that deals with abusers. Okay. So uh, we are uh, directly connected with the domestic violence courts downtown. Sure. So they're probationers. Mm -hmm. who get put on probation for domestic violence assaults, things like that, Uh uh, they get sent to my course. Okay, okay. And and what my course is, my course is is a a course to to bring the mirror Mm. to the abuser, to allow them to see themselves and the actions that they're, well, tactics that they're using on their victims, Uh how it affects their victims Uh as well as it affects them. Yeah, yeah. And in my time of working with perpetrators, that was how they got to me, is they were mandated by the courts. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I have a greater appreciation for the kind of work you do, because if it's ever to change, if we're ever to change the narrative of these this type of abuse, somebody has to work with the abuser. Correct. So, Correct. But tell us about your story. How How did you... How did you become an abuser? Uh, my story starts from uh, a young uh, young black male in the inner city. Okay. Uh, grew up with uh, uh, a great, beautiful mother, mm. uh, but no father in the home. Okay. Uh, so that left me uh, susceptible to try and find that that male connection. Okay. Uh, that I that I couldn't get from my father because my father wasn't around. So uh, from the neighborhood that I grew up in were uh, all types of uh, uh, of people in the neighborhood that I picked up from. Okay. So that you learned from. That I learned from. Uh-huh. Not, not knowing as a young man that mm-hmm. I was learning bad behavior. Okay. As well as uh, other behaviors. But even within the bad behavior it seemed to be okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it was it was so much of it that it seemed normal normal sure, so sure. uh as a young man trying to learn how to be a man mm-hmm. you pick up on traits of other men absolutely, absolutely. so uh where i grew up at i grew up uh on a corner as you say an intersection Mm-hmm. of fourth and vans which okay. was at the time the foot home projects all right all right and back in the 70s uh that particular area was heavily riddled with prostitution okay so 
I got a good dose of sin, uh, prostitution, mm -hmm. which brings with it which, violence, which brings with it violence and the pimps that come along with it that brings along the violence. Sure. So uh, when you when you see when you see guys of that stature that's dressed nice, driving uh, new cars and and everybody flocks to him like that, you know, that's that's something that a young man who doesn't have that male figure in his life is going to gravitate to Absolutely. because it looks like success. Uh huh. Yeah. So why not imitate success? You know, that is, that is so amazing because I don't know that uh, those who've never been in domestic violence situations, those who have not grown up in the projects, I started out in the projects. They don't know how normal mm -hmm. domestic violence is because it seems as if, it's just a part of relationship. Right. And, uh, you know, interacting, you know, you get mad, you know, you slap around or y'all fight. Right. All of that. And then you're bringing another level of awareness to this because it was an image for you. Correct. That seemingly represented power. Power. Uh, power, success. Uh-huh. Uh, people admired them. Mm. Uh, when they showed up, uh, people lit up. Wow! It, it was like they was a movie star, literally. Celebrities in the hood. But one thing that uh that you don't see a lot is the behind the scenes things okay. that come with it. Okay. And those were just so happened to be some things that I was privy to be able to see. Okay. Uh, for myself, and when it comes to uh violence against women. And I, I, I just want to uh, say this, it's, it's not only violence against women, mm -hmm. it's violence against men as well. Yeah. Because yeah. men go through abuse as well, but that is not talked about it's as much. It's not talked about. So uh, me seeing uh, the things that go through uh, a pimp prostitution relationship uh -huh. uh, was always really the domestic violence mm -hmm. because that was the control tactic yeah. that was used to keep the women in line. So tell me, Greg, what's going through your mind? I know the image. I know the control. But you said you had a great mother. Mm -hmm. So what's going through your mind as you are abusing another female and you've juxtaposed to that, you've got a mother, a female okay. that you esteemed? Okay. Uh, when, by the time I got old enough to start acting out, Okay. On the things that I have stored mm -hmm. over the years. Okay. So you got to understand, uh, because I want to show you the picture mm -hmm. of the young man, of the view that I seen every okay. day. Yeah. So my view was a view of a corner that every day mm -hmm. I saw prostitution, pimps, all of that activity. Yeah. That's one aspect of it. The next aspect of it is the regular uh, household couple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guy comes home from work, Absolutely. drunk, jumps on his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You got that on this side. You got one side of it where the woman is the abuser. Uh -huh. She jumps on the guy. Okay, okay. So it's 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 like uh, an area that was meant to just really really forget about a certain race of people. Mm -hmm. And when you're put in that mesh, okay, everybody is is struggling, yeah, trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. frustrations, all of that, just a cyclone of violence, yeah, that yeah. happens in that area. So being a young man growing up in that, uh -huh. it's normal to me. So you detached from you didn't look at this woman and say, wait a minute, this is this is a woman like my mother is a woman. I, I I wasn't looking at the mother aspect of it because okay. by the time I started to uh, engage in that kind of activity, uh -huh. it was uh, more of the screaming and the yelling. Okay. So with me, it didn't get physical. Okay. Where I'm um, blacking eyes or bruising arms and doing the physical hurt of it. Uh -huh. Mine was more mental. Okay. Verbal, yeah, which can be just as damaging. Because by the time that I started dipping and dabbing in it, I had this body. Okay. So this body uh -huh. has grown from that young man's body mm -hmm. to when I get angry, 
Mm. And my voice elevates. Can be intimidating. It you you swell up. Uh-huh. See, abusers are not paying attention to their actions as they as they are in the moment of mm. being the abuser mm. because they they swell up in what I call is the silverback gorilla okay. syndrome. Okay. So once that abuser gets mad, uh-huh. now it's all about power control. Uh-huh. And if you're a big guy, uh-huh. large, tall, stature, uh-huh. your victim is short. Uh-huh. When you raise your voice and you and you pump yourself up, sure. then you get bigger and scarier yeah. than what you are if you come. Okay. So those were the tactics that I used. And and don't get me wrong, even though I had a great mother, uh-huh. you know, when when an abuser is in the process of abusing, it's not that they're looking at their mom mm-hmm. because an abuser will seriously hurt you mm-hmm. for trying to hurt their mom, right. for trying to hurt their sister, right. for trying to hurt their auntie. That's true. They will hurt anybody that tries to hurt the woman aspect of their family. Wow. But can go outside of that mm-hmm. and not focus that, okay, this may be somebody's mother, sister. Yeah. You know, yeah. all they see is the anger and the rage. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And usually the first person that gets the brunt of the abuse is the person that's closest to the abuser, sure. which is who? Yeah, the wife, the woman, the, the intimate partner, whoever it is, whoever it is. So, I went through bouts of that, leaving from high school to college. Okay, it followed me to college. It followed you to college. It followed me to college because you got to understand where was my foundation. Mm-hmm. Back there on bands and yeah, my foundation was that. That was my foundation. So if 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 Everything else failed. Uh-huh. I had that store back there okay. that I could use that I knew uh-huh. was successful because I sat there and watched it. Wow. Wow. I never saw police being called for domestic violence. Really? So why would I think that those actions was going to bring any detriment to my life mm. if I if I exercise this? Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I remember You know, I'm from Dallas and we started out in the projects. And I remember um, when the police was called, they just encouraged that woman to go on back in there. And stay away from him. And just stay away from him. Mm -hmm. But go back in the house now. They weren't telling her to leave. Right. You know, they were telling her to go on back in the house, in the same house. There was no... um, Arresting him Mm -hmm. or any of that. Mm -hmm. That just didn't happen. The patriarchy of society, which is men have made society what it is. Mm -hmm. That's the patriarchy of society. Uh The patriarchy of society at a certain period in time of this country. Sure. Women had no rights. Women was property. Right. So men could men could literally whoop his wife with what was called the rule of thumb. Mm. anything that was the size of his thumb, mm-hmm. he could whoop his wife with it and not get charged for it. Wow. So you got to fast forward this mentality yeah. through the generations. Yeah, yeah. Through the generations. You got police officers, firemen, sheriff. You got everybody who has grown up with that element if they have been, grown, if they have been raising that element of domestic violence. But also the patriarchy of society uh, says that men's men's rule is law. Wow. So you 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 didn't have a respect for the woman. Mm. So why would the police at that time a male police have respect for the woman for the woman when the patriarchy of society says sure. so when they come on the call they tell him to go take a walk somewhere right quick That's cool what, off absolutely cool off and tell come her back to go back in the house and yeah. You are reestablishing more damage to that victim by wow. doing that. Wow, wow, wow. Because she feels like she has nowhere else to go. Wow. And when we think about it, the the woman, well, let me just ask you, if she would have called the police, that would have made you angrier. Uh at that period of time, uh-huh. yes, and well, you can say this period of time too, because if the police is called 
and nothing is done to that abuser. Uh huh. As soon as that police leave, yeah, there is no telling what hell mm. that victim is going to go through mm. because now the police has empowered. Yeah. That abuser. Because he didn't they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. And he's telling her why he's abusing her. You can call the police all day long. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Yeah. They're gonna come, they're gonna leave. Mm -hmm. Even if your nose bloody back then, mm. they will tell her to go clean herself up, him take a walk, mm -hmm. and don't let us come back out here again. Wow. Wow. And that was that was days of then but now you know you have so many laws now right that and it, it thank god it is different that now the abuser mm -hmm. the courts makes them go through your kind of program Programmed, right where they are learning what they're learning the understanding of what power and control is okay so they're learning the definition of what domestic violence is mm -hmm. uh they learn what the laws are. Okay. That are that they're going to face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they get in this trouble again. Yeah. Because most of the people in my class are on probation. Yeah. You're on probation now, so this is your one and only mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. to turn it around. Mm -hmm. You go back again. You out there at the Pentagon, and you might see me out there too. Wow. So, uh, but uh, they learn the definition of what domestic violence is, the understanding of the power and control wheel. Mm -hmm. They get a mirror of life-changing conversations okay. with a group of abusers mm. just like themselves, mm. along with women that are abusers too. Absolutely. With that dynamic uh -huh. of having a multicultural Mm. group because yeah. Yeah, we have it happens. we have African Americans. Yeah. We have white. Uh-huh. We have Hispanic. Mm -hmm. We have women mm -hmm. and men. All of that dynamic sure. could play in the class. So that gives an abuser an opportunity to hear that what they are going through, what they have been through, mm -hmm. they want the only one in life. Wow. That dealt wow. with those type of things because yeah. abusers have Abuse is not born. Mm -hmm. You learn you learn these behaviors. Right. Where did you learn your behavior at? Mm -hmm. My course wants to go and take you on a journey of your life, even though we're in a group setting. Right. We're gonna take you to your childhood. Yeah. We're gonna take you to your adolescence mm -hmm. and we're gonna bring you right up to speed to where you are now. Mm -hmm. And in between each facet of that, right, you get to see. Things in the mirror about yourself that you have suppressed wow. and didn't connect the fact mm -hmm. of why you are abusing mm -hmm. your victim mm -hmm. and where it comes from. Where it comes from. Why so, do you even feel this is the only option correct. to take in, in a conflict? Correct. Listen, we are having a fascinating conversation with uh, Mr. Greg Williamson and um, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we just want you to stay tuned because there's more to learn listening to Mr. Williamson as he um, owns his past, but also now is on a journey to help others overcome. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Conversations with Linda. Listen, I hope you didn't miss the first part of our episode tonight. If you did, make sure you rewind or go back and watch it later. Uh, but our guest today is Mr. Greg Williamson, and he is sharing with us the other spectrum, the other side of that coin of domestic violence uh, from the perspective of the abuser. So, Greg, we were in conversation. You were telling me about, you know, your history of seeing seeing domestic violence, especially or specifically through, you know, seeing the pimp and the prostitute, how he handled women. And you have, and then you found yourself in that kind of um, conflict, and you were in that conflict. Can we say through pimping yourself? You were you were I, pimping too. I, I, I did a little bit of it, not that much. Okay. Uh, you know, some things just aren't for everybody. Right. You My know? brother said it wasn't for him either. He's and, got the funniest story about that. And uh, uh, I just could not put up with the rigorous. Uh, uh, what do what do you say the um uh, on the job the rigorous requirements <laughs> of the job? My brother said the same thing. Uh, that 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 job uh, is is like no other because it's literally like you don't sleep. Wow! Because you always happen to watch people mm. all the time, mm. and and the way that you keep everybody in control is with laying the hammer down, mm. so to speak. Yeah. And uh, and as crazy as it may sound, the culture of that was that the women understood that and knew that that came with a part of the game when wow. they got in it. Wow. So uh, when, when you have so many traumatic events mm -hmm. with, that you see throughout your life okay. as a young man growing up, mm -hmm. And you throw that all into the same melting pot. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to see that that environment mm -hmm. didn't breed certain types of behaviors. Okay. So uh, domestic violence was one of the behaviors that that I picked up with. Okay. And uh, and so when you when you when you're in the moment, because here is what I'm sure our audience is thinking and wondering you know okay. you're in the moment i know now you are the one that's helping others but, Come let, out but of the moment. I, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah i'm trying to get in your head of where okay. you were okay you know and and i i guess what is that is different these weren't women you loved and did you ever abuse any woman that you were in an actual relationship i did uh yeah i did actually uh most of them were relationships okay? Uh, the actual process of it, yeah. We want, we want to know. So this is this is this is something that I came to realize once I got thrown into this by God because I promise you it wasn't my of my choosing. Okay, this the, the helping others. helping others with, okay. with this type okay. of thing. Okay, so this is what I this is what I, I I teach to my 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 clients in my in my courses, and this is something I had to come to realize while in the process of it. Okay. But didn't really understand it then. Uh -huh. But once I got into this business, I understand it because I got the flashing back sure. to those moments that I had yeah. with those. And what I call is the blood rage. Okay. Tell us about that. So the blood rage is when, a, when an abuser has gotten to the point where the subtle tactics mm -hmm. of their control it's mm. not working. They're not getting the results. Mm, okay. You know, uh, and when that, when that, every abuser knows this feeling. Okay. Because it's a build up of rushing rage and anger. Okay. That builds up to the point where when it takes over you, mm -hmm. you only see red. Mm. And when you see red, you're not in your reality mind anymore. Okay. You're in the rage mind. Uh -huh. And Destruction of everything that's in front of you. Even the woman that's you even love? that even even that woman. But see, you got to understand there are things that triggers uh -huh. these things, uh -huh. and the woman just so happened to be the closest person mm -hmm. in relationship wise that curves and all of that because you're okay. not going to go do that 
to just a total stranger. So you're going you, to be involved with your right. And I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but because I, I want to slow walk this. Okay. Because it might not even be about her. Correct. He's just being triggered, whether it's his sense of inadequacy, whether it's, you know, injustice he's experienced in other places. Like he's been at work, had a bad day at work. Then he's triggered. Let me let me let me share because I'm I'm transparent with my life. Okay. I, I have uh, I have nothing to hide when it comes to that because I've already put those things before the Lord. Sure. So uh with me it was I was in them streets. Uh-huh. I sold drugs. Okay. A, 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 a lot of my life. Okay. That and from that, even in that knowing I had a better purpose on mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. than what I was doing. Yeah. And because I wasted so much time of my life mm -hmm. going down a, a cycle of a dead end hole. Yeah. It built up frustration within me mm -hmm. about, about me. Yeah. Yeah. So my anger, my frustration of uh, feeling, knowing that I was smart enough that if I had to put my mind in other mm -hmm. places, I would have achieved it mm -hmm. because I don't believe in feeling in nothing, even when I was in the streets. Yeah, yeah. So with that frustration and that anger that's built up in me against me, mm -hmm. how can you love me? Mm. When I don't even love myself. Yeah, yeah. And the more and more you try and tell me you love me, mm. the more and more I feel you accepting of my rage when it comes out. Mm, okay. and, and when it comes out, it comes out different with, with, with abusers. It, it, everybody is on their own path yeah, yeah. when it comes to that. And it, it comes out, sometimes it comes out in, in physical, yeah. sometimes it comes out in verbal yeah. or mental. It could be, it could be financial. Sure. Sexual. You know? So, you know, uh, I had, a person in my group one time and he discussed that when he was young, he can remember his mom and his younger brother's dad uh -huh. always fighting. And I'm mm -hmm. talking about not just arguing, but yeah. physical fighting, both yeah. of them. And he remember his mom placing weapons throughout the house. Mm -hmm. So she would put a knife under the couch cushion, a hammer mm -hmm. on top of the refrigerator. Uh -huh. She had weapons strategically placed throughout the house because she knew wow. that when he came home, if he was in the condition that he usually in, it's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't going, she had gotten to the point where she got sick and tired, sick and tired. Yeah, yeah. And she fought back. Right. And end up, I think he, he, he bust her head. She broke his arm, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. but in that environment, you got two little boys sure. sitting sure. over here watching everything. Absolutely. What did that young man grow up to be? Right, right. The very product the very that he day. saw. Mm -hmm. So, And because it taught him, this is how you handle a woman. And, and a, a woman, but also this feeling that comes over you. Right. Whatever it is, whenever you're, you know, angry at yourself or whatever life issues you are dealing with when you get Correct. to this place mm -hmm. this is how you express it right this is what you do with it right. um so speaking of that we talk about the cycle of abuse okay I, I want you to share with our audience what that cycle is it starts at the calm mm -hmm. right right uh it always starts at the calm mm -hmm. uh but once one of those issues or Mm -hmm. Whatever the circumstances are mm -hmm. that brought on the anger. Yeah. Once you get to that anger, uh -huh. that part of the anger, that that if 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 that if that victim has history with this person, uh -huh. they know that when they see it. They know it and they, they know it's it. coming. They know it's coming. So when it comes out, the storm, it the hits. storm that hits, which is the rage of the abuser, yeah. once it hits and subsides, okay, it's over with now. It's over. The rage has also subsided. Mm. So when you see red, when it subsides, the screen turns back clear. Right. So now you're back to that person. Mm -hmm. That you. That's you, the calm person uh -huh. and loving that, person that, that the person loves. Love. You're back to that. That's the cycle. 
Right. And that's when you go through the I'm honey, sorry. Honey moon finger. Right. Were you that person too that I'm sorry? I would yes, I was even I'm telling you something, even in the process of of me doing that, I was remorseful in the process of it. Really? Because uh you know, you always see on cartoons, you got the devil on your side, you yeah. got the angel on this side. Uh -huh. I could always hear my mom and my grandmama voice in the back of my head. Oh, wow. You know you're wrong. Wow. You know you're wrong. Yeah. But that rage was so strong. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like a fight within myself to try and pull it back. Uh -huh. But once it's let out, uh -huh. it's not It's not, It's not. not going to stop until that, that and I'm spiritual. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to share that with you. I'm spiritual. I believe we house spirits. Absolutely. We absorb spirits because mm -hmm. we are a spirit. Right. So in the process of our traumatic events, we have opened ourselves up for those type of spirits to house in us yeah. because the enemy is always going to send out his minions. Right. Right. To kill, steal and destroy the human race because he doesn't like. Right. Humans anyway, because God loves us. So that 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 rage for spirit was passed down to you somewhere. Yeah, you picked it up somewhere. Somewhere, and that's the that's the that's the whole thing of my program, trying to get them to find that somewhere. Somewhere for us to get to a point where we can find a balance. So when was your what we call aha moment, where you said, "What am I doing? I can't do this anymore." This is not who I really am. Okay, I I uh, I had a relationship, and I'm I'm not going to divulge too many details because the person will know who I'm talking about. Okay, but I had a relationship uh, with the young lady, and it was uh, a time that we was verbally arguing and yelling at each other, cussing mm -hmm. each other back and forth, and the child came out the room. Okay, mm -hmm. and the child was standing there crying because. The two adults in there was fighting like they finna really kill each other. Uh -huh. And that was my aha moment. All right. When when that happened, I said, no, I can't, I cannot be the person that that kid sees mm -hmm. and absorb this from. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and because even in it, like I said before, not really liking who I was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the inside of me mm -hmm. just made me just more rageful. That somebody else did. Wow. What what about what about the guy? Because we have male viewers as well. Okay. What what about the guy that says she she made me do it? Because you know, when I was doing counseling for perpetrators, I had a few guys in there who would just say, you know, you had those who were remorseful, those who were just there because the course mandated them to be. But I had a few that said, no. You don't know her. She she's the cause of me doing. It, you know, it 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 has been proven that a lot of times guys, okay, the roles can be reversed. Uh huh. Guys can get with women who are more aggressive than mm -hmm. they are. Okay. What does society tell us though? Mm -hmm. The woman is the victim. She ain't the aggressor. Mm -hmm. Who the police gonna come and look at? Yeah, when yeah. they get there on the scene, right? They looking at the male because the male is the male. He has more power. Right. He's the one that's most of sure. the time gonna inflict it. Uh huh. But the roles have reversed to the point where the, the woman is aggressive. So what is what should a man do if we, if we got a viewer who's watching who's saying you know I'm in a situation where she is aggressive. Mm -hmm. What should he do? Should he stay in the relationship? How in the moment? Let's even just talk. Let's narrow it down in that moment. What should he do? It has to. It has to come just like a, a victim of domestic violence. It has to come a point in time where they have come to a point where they have just gotten tired mm -hmm. of dealing with that type of aggression mm -hmm. coming from somebody who's supposed to love them. Okay. So uh, he has to start to think about what is his life worth. Mm, okay. Is your life worth you watching her mm -hmm. graduate? Yeah. Because regardless of whether who the abuser are, uh -huh. when one tactic don't work, wow. they finna elevate it. When when you get used to this tactic, mm. 
then I got to bring something else a little bit stronger than this because this don't put that fear in you. Yeah. Like the other one did. Yeah. So it's a staircase step of, of graduation mm. of anger. He has to come to a, 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 a fruition about where, what he wants his life to look like. Okay. What is this the type of woman that he signed up for? Mm. That's good. And a lot of times as men, we want to fix the situation. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. always feel that we can fix it. And sometimes the woman just wants you to listen. Mm, that's true. That's so true. in the process of him trying to fix it with this aggressor, uh -huh. no matter what he does, mm -hmm. still doesn't work. Sometimes we have to come to an understanding about our feelings. Uh -huh. Is your feelings worth your life? Mm -hmm. And if you're tired of having that good, rich and feeling mm -hmm. of being with this person, then you got to start having thoughts of separated from this person yeah because it's just a matter of time before that aggression that she's giving you gonna make you raise up absolutely and turn into the aggressor because that's what we see when women become the abusers they have been through so much yeah for so long and here it is this person come along and think that they gonna do her the way oh, that she did them okay, okay and now she done got fed up with it now she strikes back she becomes the abuser. she becomes the abuser Another cycle. Another cycle. And children probably watching. And here we go. Keeping it going. Listen, we're going to take a commercial break uh, with this conversation about domestic violence. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Conversations with Linda. Listen, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I know it's being shared with also uh, breast cancer awareness, um, but uh, domestic violence is real, you all. And we have to uh, become aware for the sake of ourselves, our daughters, sons, grandchildren, uh, because even now, uh, and, and let me just say thank you, Greg, again for sharing with me. But even now, it's it's younger and younger. You know, we're finding that girls are being abused in junior high and high school in these relationships. Okay, uh, me and my great friend Marquita Odom, who is the di executive director of the YWCA, uh -huh. uh, we did this uh, girls retreat type thing where we talked about a mirror subject to all different ages of young mm -hmm. ladies and all of that. And what we found out, and this was very alarming to us, and this, this young lady was like 12 years old that told us this, is that the way that, that they're looking at their relationships now is that if the young man does not hit them, mm. he doesn't love them. Wow. 12. So at 12. So Imagine a young lady at 12 years old in, in a little boyfriend, girlfriend type situation. Yeah. And every time something comes up that he don't like or she talks smart or says something that he don't like, he hits her. She equates that with love. Wow. So what does that do for her when she gets in her adult life? Right. Right. And for him. And for him because it's, it's going to be a lot of traumatic events for all parties involved. Right. Lives are going to be wrecked. And now we're, we're bringing in a generation that we're seeing play out on TV that violence is just uh, no question that they, they would rather use violence than understand it, right. period. Right. So, or just communicating, just right. talking. Um, I got to ask you this, and this was not on my list of questions to add. Okay. Uh, but I got to ask you, because this is another piece I think that we need to bring awareness to, and it may not be something you're well versed in, okay. but if you could take a shot at it, okay. because you did say, you know, that you had gotten, you saw a lot of the pimp and prostitute mm -hmm. stuff. You got into it, so, you know, it was too rigorous, but you got into it because the other piece is sex trafficking. Correct. And we know that that also, as you've already told us, it's a lot of violence in that for power and control. Right. 
what can we do as a community? You know, I know it's a whole nother conversation, but I, since I got you in this chair, because how, how are our girls getting out there and getting so caught and getting caught up? And now they got somebody controlling them that when they want to come out, they can't. Right. Um, I think it starts, it, it starts at home. Mm hmm we got to start having more conversation with our children. We are giving our children leeway that our parents mm -hmm. didn't even give us. Mm -hmm. And for the simple fact that society has allowed the generations to go unchecked, okay, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, it's causing, you, you see a lot of young ladies that when they come of age, uh -huh. all of a sudden now they're clashing with their mothers. Right, right. Because of what society is putting in their head outside of the home. Uh -huh. Then when they come back in the home, now they want to compare home to so, out here. So how does this girl who may have come, you know, from a decent home, whatever, mm -hmm. now she's clashing with her, her mom. How does he get her? How does that pimp get her? She First of all, she's vulnerable. Okay. Most of the time she runs away from home. Okay. And, and most of the times uh, they run across her uh -huh. off of her the world, give mm -hmm. her a, a place to sleep, put some food in her mouth, yeah. buy her some clothes, uh -huh. groom her, groom her, okay. groom her before they tell her that now it's time for you to start paying this back. Mm. Okay. You no. Know, or you got a promiscuous young lady. All right. That's having sex with. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? She's uh -huh. having a lot uh -huh. of sex. Uh -huh. She's already has placed her body in a position for that type of business. Mm. So prostitution on the corner is not as prevalent as it used to be back in the day. Uh -huh. So now prostitution is on the back page websites. Okay. Okay. And that's that's what they're doing. They have these these uh pages, these back page websites that uh -huh. they that they get on and uh, you meet the young ladies, mm -hmm. have sex with them. Mm -hmm. The guys get paid, mm -hmm. and and it, 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 and in some cases that we have seen, it's exciting to them young ladies. Really, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. exciting to them. They feel like they're part of something. Mm -hmm. They with somebody that really loves them, mm -hmm. and to do the world for them. Okay. Once they get get themselves caught up in that world, it's hard to come out of it because. If a young lady comes from is 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 grabbed from Memphis, uh -huh. then she might end up in California in two days. Wow, wow! So it's not like they're keeping the young lady in town where she's from. Uh -huh. They got to get her completely away from everything that she knows, so she can totally be dependent on them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you definitely have to keep a conversation going with your young daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, Parents just have to do the best that they can. Yeah, you yeah. know, and 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 it's it's hard it's hard for a parent these days when you comparing how they're making things of society seem like it's just that simple to obtain. Yeah, when it's not, mm -hmm. and that's what gets a lot of people caught up mm -hmm. thinking that okay, I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna do this for a couple months and I'm gonna get this money and I'm gonna be rich. No, it don't take that. It don't. It, it, it don't go like that. But very few people in this world luck up and and make it yeah. overnight success. Like absolutely, that. absolutely. The rest of us got to work year in and year out right. to build that right. up. Right, right. So uh, it's always fast paced. They're always looking for the right now. Right. Uh, they are. They they. Society has glorified. Yeah. Uh, a young woman's body now. Mm. And. For the simple fact that these young ladies see this stuff on TV, yeah. I see I see young girls as young as nine, ten years old twerking in front of their mamas, yeah, and and their mamas is egging them on, yeah. You know, we yeah. are we are we are living vicariously through our children. Through our children, that's so true. So you true. know, so regardless of who the parents are, is living vicariously through their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes out all kinds of ways. So. So back to the domestic violence, and I, I'm gonna have to do a whole show on on that whole piece because that is so prevalent, and we don't, and especially in the African American community, it doesn't get talked about much. It doesn't make much news. You know, our kids come up missing 
-hmm. You know, it doesn't make front page right. the first uh, 15 minutes of the news. So we, we've definitely got to do more in that area. But let me go back to this before our show uh, ends. You know, you have come full circle. Mm -hmm. You're now helping others, men, women, all uh, races, you know, discover what their what it was that mm -hmm. got them here. How did you forgive yourself? What what did you do to make peace with your your spirit, your soul? Uh I had to go back to the altar. Okay. So to speak. Everybody doesn't mm -hmm. that was just my path. Okay. My path led to the altar. All right. My path led uh, to the altar through God's agents. Mm -hmm. God sent angels in my life mm. at a point in time where he could really reach me. Wow. Uh, was that a low place in your life? No, actually, it was a place where God was actually blessing me. Mm, okay. He was actually blessing me, and I happened to meet uh, my best friend, Marquita Oldham, which is, which is one of my best friends, and we met the way that we met. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was like God spoke to me mm. and told me that this is who I'm going to use mm. okay. to get you closer to me. All right. Because I was unchurched all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, when we met, uh, God used her, led me to church, mm -hmm. back to him. Wow. With me getting on the getting on the altar literally every Sunday I went to church and I cried every Sunday. I'm really? talking about boohoo ball. It was wow. like God was flushing me wow. wow, of all of the things that had been hindering me in my life mm -hmm. to the point where he placed me around. I'm going to show you guys when you hear people say God has a funny sense of humor. Uh -huh. He does uh -huh. because at that point in my life, God placed me around nothing but powerful women. <laughs> okay. All right. Being around powerful and preaching women. Really? Powerful preaching women. Uh -huh. And when when I got in that environment, I'm, I'm an observer. Uh -huh. I watch, I sit back, I watch everything. Uh -huh. uh, I, I got to learn and understand the things that women go through in life mm. by being around them women. Okay. And, them, and, and those women, how they interacted with other women and uh -huh. their issues all right. and all of those things, it, it really allowed me to see the things that my mom and my grandmama always had seen mm. and what my role is on this earth. Okay. And it's not for me to be damaging mm. my sisters in a way that even when I'm gone, my damage is still with them. Oh, that's powerful. So that's, powerful. Uh, that's how I came out of it. Mm -hmm. God brought me out of it. Uh, I threw up when mm -hmm. I talk about it a lot, because that's a moment in my life where I had a full understanding of what the value of a woman was. Mm. And once I got to that point, and that's uh, abusers have to get to that point mm -hmm. where they value their woman, mm -hmm. regardless of what the woman, who she is, yeah. you have to value her. And when you value her, you're not going to want to do anything to hurt her. Yeah. So yeah. that's what that's, got that's me to that. That's very powerful. Um, what resources are out there? I know you have a program. Could you just tell us again about what your program does and, and is the only way that men are able to, all women able to enter your program is through the courts or can someone just show up? Okay. The name of my organization is Circle of Life Transformation Center. Mm -hmm. uh, it was created back in 2011. Uh, me and my best friend, Marquita Odom, we, we created it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Started doing speaking engagements. Okay. How that happened, I'll never know. <laughs> uh, started doing speaking engagements, and from speaking engagements to speaking engagements to speaking engagements to referrals. Okay. Okay. So we got a referral. Somebody referred us to uh, a connection at the Pentafon. Mm -hmm. They wanted they wanted to know if we could put a program together. Wow. To teach people who suffer from uh, domestic violence who uh -huh. were the abusers. We could do a program for them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Got that first opportunity. And from there, we have gotten uh, connected with the domestic violence courts okay. uh, downtown. Uh -huh. uh, but can someone who's watching today saying, you know what, I need to make a change. This, this is uh, what I was getting to. So 
the program right now consists of people coming from probation to the course. Right. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we're fixing to start uh, another class okay. that deals with people who want to change mm -hmm. on their own. On their own. To yeah. come in for the class. Uh -huh. Don't get me wrong. Uh, things cost, they're all expensive. Absolutely. So uh, the classes usually run $35 a class. That's all? That's all. $35 a class, and it usually lasts anywhere around 12 to 15 weeks, depending on the severity of the class structure that we have. Uh -huh. Some classes need to go those extra weeks to learn just a little bit more. Yeah. Some uh -huh. are at a point where they get it, and it's on them now whether they're going to reoffend or not. I am so, so thankful that you're opening that up to whoever wants to come because there may be people, I know there are people who, who are seeing themselves but don't know how to make the change. And so if they don't have to get to a point where they end up going to jail right. and the courts mandate them, that's even better. Right. And now we know there's going to be a service available even for our local churches and other community uh, uh, leaders can say, hey, this is a place where you can go. This is a, we mm -hmm. know this group is going on. Right. Um, I, I think that's, and, cause, and let me just make sure I, I mentioned this because it's not just physical abuse. Right. If someone is having issues with being abusive verbally, mm -hmm. ab abusive mentally, mm -hmm. they need what you're offering. Mm -hmm. They need what you're offering. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing um, I really believe that this is some good work that you're doing. And as much as we can, we're going to make sure uh, that we get the word out. Uh, I, I believe when I look at society, we have such an angry society, an angry yes. culture. Mm -hmm. So even if we don't want to call it domestic violence, we just need to deal with this anger, right. this rage that's in our culture. That's right. Absolutely. Listen, I'm out of time, but I'm never out of conversation. Uh, please join me every Sunday evening here at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for Conversations with Linda. Of course, you know the pre-chat is at 6.30, uh, but we are, we're having great conversations. You all have a fabulous week, and we'll see you next Sunday.